right, good morning. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Hopefully you were able to sign on and we just shared just a nice video of some gorgeous scenery of Haida Kauai. Uh, my name is Carrie Niemeyer. I'm the Director of Marketing and Sales for Wells Gray Tours. And joining me this morning, we have a special guest. I'm thrilled to have one of our very own fabulous tour directors with us this morning, uh, Marian Weinhold. And she has been a tour director with Wells Gray Tours uh, since 2012 and has led many tours over those years um, to Haida Gwaii. So we are so thrilled to have her with us this morning to share some insight um, about Haida Gwaii. I have also been to Haida Gwaii once. I bunked up with uh, Miss Marion about four years ago and took the tour. So we're both um, really happy to share some insight about um, the tour. Uh, maybe you're already booked or thinking about going. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a, a presentation and then at the end, um, we'll open it up for some questions. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can this morning. And if for any reason we can't get um, to your question or need to further the answer, we'll make sure to get back to, um, back, uh, to you. And um, this morning I am wearing uh, my Raven fan, so a, a very special piece I purchased in Haida Gwaii. So I love wearing this, and I know uh, Marion has some special pieces on as well. Can you tell us about those, Marion? Absolutely. I'm wearing uh, an eagle out of uh, Argelite, and it was uh, done by a local uh, Haida Gwaii artist, a she artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, behind me, I have got a, out of yellow cedar, I've got a carving of an orca. And I am wearing my um, Haida Gwaii is calling and I must go. And so I'm really hoping that that is going to happen in 2021 because it unfortunately didn't happen in 2020. Yay. Oh, so some beautiful, so just a little snippet of what the beautiful handicrafts you can purchase when you go on the tour. Yes, such a sad year for everyone, obviously, last year. Um, we are very hopeful at this time that the tours will be running ahead this summer. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed. Um, yeah, fingers are crossed. Everyone cross those fingers that the travel restrictions will be lifted uh, in time. Um, now, also today is an extra special day to be hosting this webinar as it is also um, National Earth Day. Um, National Earth Day was uh, created back in the spring of 1970 um, by a senator of the name Gaylord Nelson. And this was a way to really force the issue onto the national agenda of environmental issues. And it has been taking place every year since um, with many, many countries involved. And the theme for this year for National Earth Day is to restore our earth. And this is focusing on a lot of the natural processes, uh, emerging green technologies, innovative thinking um, that can really help to restore the world's ecosystems. So it really does tie in so much to Haida Gwaii. Um, they are really one of the last and most pristine archipelagos in the world. Um, so we are so lucky to really have them in our backyard here in British Columbia. Um, Haida Gwaii was officially renamed um, in 2009. It was previously um, known as the Queen Charlotte Islands. Um, it's made up of about 100, well, it is made up of 150 islands, um, and they are located about 80 kilometers off the north coast of BC. Um, as you may have watched in the video, it's very known for its uh, rugged coastline, the majestic mountains, the stunning array of marine life, the giant cedar forests, and the really vibrant Haida culture. Uh, currently, there are about 5,000 residents that are scattered uh, between several communities um, on two of the largest islands, which is Graham Island and Moresby Island. Um, and these residents are so dedicated. They've really united to protect both the land and the sea for the future generations. 
And in going on the tour and doing a lot of research um, about their fight to protect this pristine landscape, they don't necessarily believe they own the land, but they believe that they are part of it. And it is their sort of duty to protect it. And the one overwhelming um, takeaway that I took is when you are there, you'll be reminded that everything is connected to everything. And they live in harmony with the earth and the nature around them. And they really are trying to live in a manner um, that is as sustainable as possible. So a pretty special place to talk about on a very special day. And so let's, let's get started. So I'm going to share um, my screen. So just give me two moments to do that. Okay. <clears throat> Let me know, Marion. Can you see the first uh, slide here? Hi, yeah. Kwai. Yeah, and can you see? Okay, and you can. Can you see myself? I can. Great. Okay, so let's get started. Um. Wells Great Tours has been offering uh, tours to Haida Gwaii, if you can believe this, since 1978. Um, so 2021 will be our 43rd year arranging tours to these amazing islands. Um, so we're very hopeful they will go ahead. We have departures out of the interior and lower mainland. There are four departures. Um, starting in July and then into August, leaving back to back. Um, and each tour, if you're from the interior, is seven days. Leaving from the lower mainland is six days. And then we have our one tour leaving from Vancouver Island in July, um, also seven days. So um, many of the departures are filling up very quickly, um, as it is a tour 25. Um, this means we take a maximum of 25 people or less. And actually for Haida Gwaii, we only take 20 people. So nice small group, um, which is a wonderful way to really um, be more sustainable as we travel. And one other thing I would like to point out is it, this tour is um, a tour level activity number three. So you are asked to sign a waiver when you book on this tour just to make sure you are able to do all the activities involved. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the presentation uh, this morning. And we'll have questions at the end. So depending on where you are located, um, if you're from Victoria, you'll be flown from Victoria to Vancouver, uh, the interior, um, into Vancouver and we overnight you um, in Richmond at the Pacific Gateway Hotel. If you're from the Lower Mainland, you will just meet the group um, at the airport in Vancouver. So this is our, our first day we overnight and then the second day, the morning we'll be going to YBR and we take an Air Canada flight. That's a two hour flight to Sandspit, which uh, the airport's located on Moresby Island. It's a really lovely small airport. Then uh, we will be greeted by our limo. Look at this fancy ride. It is our minibus um, that is devoted to take us around Haida Gwaii for the next six days. So we'll board our limo and then make our way um, to the ferry terminal. This is the ferry terminal. <laughs> it's probably the most beautiful ferry terminal I've ever seen. So here's our customers uh, waiting for the ferry. The crossing takes about 20 minutes. Um, and I, I will point out that all of the photographs used this morning in the presentation were taken on our tours, uh, many of them by Mary and herself um, or other tour directors. Um, and then we'll board the ferry. You can hang out up, upstairs, outside, enjoy the gorgeous passage over. Um, you can stay on the bus if you like, or there is a covered little area on the bottom of the ferry as well. So just depending on the weather. This is one of our groups enjoying the ride over. Okay. 
Then in the afternoon, our first afternoon, we'll be going directly to the Haida Heritage Center. Um, there are six momenta um, poles. Uh, these were raised in 2001, and this was to sort of start the beginning of the construction for this world-class cultural center. Um, the center tells the story of the Haida Nation. It features a large collection of Haida culture, native art. Uh, it's a fabulous place to spend a few hours. We will be having an interpretive talk uh, for about an hour where we will learn about the poles, um, the crests on the poles, the meaning behind the crests and the clans um, who carved them. And I can tell you, um, I was moved to tears when learning about the history and all the meanings um, behind these poles. Then you will have some free time on your own to wander around the inside of the gallery. Um, and then this is just a photograph here. Um, one of the guides doing the interpretive talk, you'll learn about the poles on the front of the center and then also all of the poles um, on the back and then just the absolutely stunning scenery behind you. Um, located right next to the center is a carving shed. Um, I was very fortunate when I was on the tour, there were artists working uh, during that time. So they may be there when you are there, you just never know. And when I, our tour was there, these artists were carving the pole for the new hospital. Um, in Haida Gwaii and the pole has now been completed and being raised and this is a photograph of it Marion took I think just two years ago. It's gorgeous. And then this in the evening we'll be checking into the Sea Raven Motel. So this will be our home away from home for the next five nights. As you can see it is um, not a luxury hotel by any means. Um, so if you are on the second floor, there is a staircase you would need to go up and down. There is no elevator. Um, it's, it's a basic place, but it's absolutely lovely and has everything you need. Now the first evening for most of the tours. Um, it might fall on a different evening depending on the date of the tour you are booked on, but one of the absolute highlights on this trip um, will be going to Kiwana's Kitchen in Skidigit, where this Haida member, Roberta Olson, has um, opened up her home and serves a fabulous traditional Haida feast for us. Um, you can see the group there on the right, Marion is in the front of the photo. And that's Roberta with her grandchildren. Um, so they come and help serve the meal, and clear the plates. Sometimes depending on who's there, they'll even sing to you. And it's just an absolutely beautiful experience. Um, Marion, did you want to add anything to that? Um, you're going to be showing a video, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, and on the video you will get a feeling that this woman is gracious and it is just so true. It's just a, uh, such a delight being in her presence. So that's Roberta herself. And Kina Wai um, is her Haida name and it means the gatherer. Now she does a little less gathering as she's getting older, but her family will do the gathering for her. And so what we have to eat is what they collected that particular day. Uh, everything is wonderful and fresh. In the video, you're going to see her cutting some greenery, and that is C. asparagus, one of my absolute favorites. Uh, and uh, hopefully it'll be part of the meal because uh, it is so delicious. Uh, you'll see in front of you the uh, scallop shell, and that is the appetizers. And before we uh, enjoy our appetizers, Roberta will very graciously welcome us to her home. There will be a prayer said and the her family will the, the young kids will show tell us what the Haida name is and what it is that we are going to be having for the appetizer and then we move on into the main course 
as Kerry said, an absolute, uh, absolute highlight. I, I absolutely loved the experience there. I would go back to Haida Gwaii just to be in her presence and be in her home. She is an amazing lady. So yes, I did find a, a video clip, so I'm going to share that with you. Here we go. Cooking wasn't always my thing, but when we were blockading the logging roads, 85 to 89, I volunteered to cook because you need a cook wherever you go. And when there was tears and blockading and helicopters and police and jail and all that, everybody was crying and I found when I made food, it made them happy. That's when I realized food can build your spirit, your soul, your mind, your body. So I took it more serious. Because I just moved in this house years ago and it was like I was rolling around heaven all day with this view and ravens and eagles and whales out there. And, and then I opened it up to the world. Oh, I just love her. I get emotional watching that every time. Okay. Um, then our next day. Um, this is our day where we have an optional flight out uh, to Minstens. Um, it is optional. Uh, we highly recommend it um, because it is such a unique experience. Um, each there is a float plane that uh, leaves in the morning and the afternoon. Um, so there's two different departures and each uh, float plane only does seat five people. So if you are considering that, uh, you would want to book it early because it sells out very quickly. Um, and I think I, uh, I'm going to ask Marion. I have not done this experience myself, but I know Marion has, so she can expand a little bit more about what you'll sort of see and do. Um, in instance. So the the adventure begins with the seaplane ride and it is about an hour and it is beautiful. Our pilot Peter is very very experienced and will take where the weather allows and hopefully it'll be different on the way down than it is on the way up depending on weather. Uh, he will be explaining uh, about the islands on the way down. Then if you can believe it, you will be meeting the Zodiac in the bay and the Zodiac comes up to the seaplane. You will get out onto the pontoon, make your way onto the Zodiac to put on the survival outfits and then off to Skungwai. Skungwai is the Ahida name for an instance which we basically use exclusively. And then when you come back, well, the afternoon people are coming on the plane. And so Peter and Patrick is the Zodiac driver. They orchestrate this beautifully where the people come out of the plane, you move here, you take off your survival suit, give it to so-and-so, and you move around until pretty soon everybody's uh, switched around. It was, people were on the Zodiac are now on the plane and vice versa. And off uh, the afternoon people go to Skangwai. When you, uh, so it's about a half an hour trip on the Zodiac, arriving at the island, and it's on the opposite uh, side of the island that is the put in point for the Zodiac. And it is totally rough, there is no dock, and depending on the tide, Patrick will look, oh, okay, over here is where we can tie up the best, struggle out of the Zodiac, and then you have this magical 20 minute hike into the actual vi village. Uh, it's through the forest. Um, they've kept the deer away, so it's just absolutely stunning, this walk to the village. At the village, you meet the uh, watchman in the watchman's cabin. And when they are ready, because it's uh, Wells Gray, nobody has got any kind of power that, you're there and it happens. 
when it's our turn, then we go with the watchman and they give us a tour of the village. A uh, very spiritual, very contemplative. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, this trip through the village. Some free time just to enjoy and just to be in this amazing place and then make, the, make your way back to the Zodiac. Uh, I, I just want to mention that I think three, maybe four years ago, there was a huge winter storm where the wind came in a different direction than it usually is, toppled over many trees. Thank goodness, and for whatever reason, all the poles remain standing. However, without those trees, there's less protection for those poles the next time that wind comes this way. And as Carrie said, uh, it is recommended you take this because we don't know how long, how much longer it's going to be there. Another wind like that may take away all those poles. It's um, kind of a, a, a temporary thing that we still have. So just so you know. Thank you, Marianne. Um, sounds amazing. I would love to go hide back to Haida Gwaii and, and do that while we still can. Um, if you choose not to do the flow plane or it is sold out, um, you will still have an absolutely fabulous day in town, in the village. You have a free day at leisure. Um, there's the beautiful harbor. There's sometimes a farmer's market going on. Um, there is also the visitor center. They have a wonderful visitor center. They play interactive movies you can watch, a fantastic gift shop, um, some other fabulous little stores, a wonderful couple late places to have a beautiful lunch. So you'll, um, you'll have a wonderful day. And you even have the option, um, if things are open this summer, they have been in the past, um, you could even book a fishing excursion, rent a kayak or uh, rent a bicycle. So lots of options on this day. Well, the fishing, the fishing excursion would have to be done ahead of time, contacting the visitor information. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. So if you, if for some reason you are interested in that, please let us know and we will find out who we can get hold of to make that happen for you. Um, our next day, we have a local naturalist guide that joins us for the whole day. Um, we drive up to Masset, so this is on the north coast of Graham Island, and we're going to visit the Haida village of Old Masset. Um, we visit a church that's there, and also what you see in the photograph here is Sarah Davidson's uh, craft shop. Uh, she sells um, lots of native art, many from the local residents who live on Haida Gwaii. That's where I bought my piece. Um, so it's lots of silver, wood carvings. It's just an absolutely fabulous place. Her stepson um, is a very well-known carver, an artist in Haida Gwaii. His name is Reg Davidson. And I have a short video clip to show you uh, about him. My Haida name is Skilkotlis, but in the world today they know me as Reg Davidson. And I'm from Haida Gwaii. More years than not, I've been an artist at a carver. I'm a morning person, so I, I get up early and enjoy the quietness. I start between four and five every day. My objective is to be happy and enjoy what I'm doing. And I never wish for anything, because then that makes you feel sad, because you're not happy with what you're doing. And I never grew up with our culture, but our grandkids grow up with it now, and it's in the school system. You know, so it's gone full circle. 
I always feel everybody has a culture, but the only difference with us is we're hanging on to what we have, you know. Oh, the people there are just living such a wonderful, simple life. That's such a nice reminder that when I found that video, to not wish for so much and be happy with what we have, especially during these times. Um, also in this area, there is um, this really fun photo opportunity on what's called the Hitchhiker's Bench. And it was carved. Um, they have a chainsaw carving competition in Haida Gwaii. And I, I do think it's annually. And this was one of the pieces that was carved uh, for that competition and it is located on the roadside and people do use it um, to hitchhike to go down island. Um, so it's, it's just a fun place. We let the ladies on the, back on the bus. We didn't make them hitchhike hike back. But <laughs> So it's a very fun morning. Then in the afternoon, uh, we drive along the scenic north um, road up to North Beach to Naiku National Park. Um, so it's a provincial park and this is where, um, this is what they nickname the mushroom forest. Um, the moss is just unreal. It's so beautiful. It, it will just take your breath away. So we get to see that and then we make our way, um, we park at the park and this is where we walk up Toe Hill. Um, so it's volcanic Toe Hill, and at the top is a magnificent view of the coastline. And on a clear day, you can actually see um, Alaska. Um, so this photograph I wanted to show, this is the, they have built a, a, a really nice staircase all the way up to the top of Toe Hill. Um, it is a climb. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, but we allow lots of time for you able to do that if you so wish. And so this is the view at the top, so it's definitely worth it. And just below is um, the beach. It was called is called Agate Beach. So here's a picture of one of our groups uh, at the top. That's Mary in there in the front. <laughs> They don't look too out of breath, do they? They, they did okay. Um, and if you choose not to go up Toe Hill, depending on weather or wind or your activity level for that day, um, there's still lots to do. There's a beautiful 800 meter flat walk out uh, to the blowhole. So you can see the waves crashing. You can take gorgeous photographs. Um, and then also to the right, um, I believe is what is called Rose Spit Beach. And this is where the Haida believed the, it sort of depicts the story of the first man of human creation. Um, many of you might be familiar with the carving um, at UBC, uh, Museum of Anthropology, of the clamshell with the raven inside. I think Marion can expand a little bit more on this um, for me, but when you're there, they will tell you this story. Yeah, so it's uh, Naiku means uh, long nose. And so that would be that spit uh, going out. And then on the spit is North Beach. And that is the location of uh, the story of the raven finding the clamshell. He found the clamshell and things are moving, open it up and there was mankind. And uh, so the raven let, uh, let mankind out. And uh, just uh, to expand on what Carrie said, if you go up Tro Hill and come back down again, you will end up at the blowhole as well. And so either you go up and down to get to the blowhole or you go the 800 meters flat to go to the blowhole. And, uh, and then return flat both, both pretty much. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thanks Marion. Uh, then you have time to explore on Agate Beach. Um, we have a picnic lunch this day, and that's a bit far away, but when you actually get up close, um, I took this photograph, but this is just how beautiful the rocks are. You can search for agates, so really, really fun to uh, look around and explore. 
And I believe agates are worth some money. So if you find some, you might be able to, uh, to make some money while you're on tour. <laughs> Um, also on this day, on the way back, we stop at Balance Rock. Um, That's actually the next day, Carrie. Oh, next day. I'm sorry. Next day. We stop at Balance Rock. Um, an extraordinary photo opportunity. We haven't had anyone on our tour, tour been able to push over the rock as of yet. So we are challenging all of our guests to see if you can be the one um, to get this rock to move. It has been there for centuries. <laughs> and withstands all of the weather elements and it's just a, an amazing thing to see how it just sits there perched up without moving. Uh, we also have a couple other fun photo opportunities that next day. Um, Marion, what is the name of the, on the left with the ladies on the top there? Is there a uh, name for that? Not really. It, it, no. It's a, a memorial for four people that uh, were that died in the space of a year or a year and a half from the particular uh, neighborhood where this is up. And so it's, it's a memorial mm -hmm. for those four people. Unrelated, uh, the, the deaths were unrelated. It's not as though four people died in an accident, but yeah. You know. We do lots of group photos here. It's just, um, a, it takes uh, really nice pictures. And then on the right, you see one of our customers. Um, this is called the Stack Wall with just an absolutely amazing scenery behind you. So it's just a wonderful place to take a photo. And the Stack Wall is to be noted because it's not made of stone. It's actually made from wood. So it is logs that are, um, made. I'm not sure if Marion wants to say a bit more about that. Well, it was a woman that lives down the road and she started by making a stack wall fence and then other people uh, asked her to do it and then other people started to learn how to do it. And so you'll find it all over uh, the North and the South Island, uh, these stack walls and they're really quite beautiful. This one right here is at the Welcome to it says Queen Charlotte City because it's an old sign. Now it's the village of Queen Charlotte. And this is overlooking the strait that our hotel is actually on. Beautiful. Okay, um, then our next day, uh, we are going to visit the arts community of Tell. Um, we'll visit two different interesting craft shops. Um, that's when we stop at Balance Rock and do those other uh, couple of fun photo shoots. Um, and then we have a couple of forest walks in the afternoon. Um, in this photograph, uh, this is the forest walk on the Golden uh, Spruce Trail. The Golden Spruce, it was a very, very famous story, famous tree that was maliciously cut down in 1997. So I won't tell you everything today because you are gonna learn the story um, behind this. But just walking in the forest and learning about how the forest works and seeing these huge cedars, some of them are, are which um, are 500 years old. It will just take your breath away and the smell is amazing. Um, and then here's a couple of photos of just how big these cedars really are. Uh, the cedar on the left, you can go right through it <laughs> so this lady has climbed all the way through and come out the other side and then here's a group photo in front of one of the trees so you can just sort of get a feeling of how humble this will make you feel being in these forests um, and I'll just go back one slide um, our group here was joined by a local uh, Haida member named Dale who has been an advocate for the forests for many, many years. And he was in town and around and he joined our group and sort of did this special guided tour for them, um, which was really great. And I think the one thing about Haida Gwaii, we do send tours back to back, um, but there's something different and wonderful and magical that happens on every single tour. So, it's just that you just never know uh, you're going to get maybe a special carver or a guest or it's just, it just makes every tour a little bit unique.
And then sadly, it's already our last day on Hide to Fly. It goes so fast. You won't want to leave, trust me. Um, but on the last day, a really exciting day, we board uh, large zodiacs uh, for an all day excursion around Louise Island. Um, so we're going to go explore lots of the secluded coves, the narrow passageways. There's lots of opportunity to watch for wildlife, lots of seals and sea lions and eagles and falcons. Um, just amazing. Um, we do a stop at Skidans. Um, so this is the abandoned village. Um, and it was abandoned over a century ago. And I just have a couple photographs here. And for the Zodiacs, you will, if you can see in the photograph, you will be suited up with waterproof um, gear, life jackets. Of course, you would want to dress warm underneath that, depending on the weather. Um, but you should be very, very comfortable. And the Moresby's explorers that lead this tour are, the guides are absolutely amazing. Um, you can see the gentleman on the right, and he's pretty cute too. So he's not, he's not hard to look at. So that's always nice, but they are wonderful. They take such wonderful care of us and they serve the most delicious picnic lunch um, when we are over in uh, Skidans. So this is the scenery. Marion took this photograph. So you can expect to just be floating around in bliss through these waters. Hopefully it's a beautiful, calm blue day. Um, part of the reason we rate this tour as an activity level three um, is because the nature of getting in and out of a zodiac on a beach can be tricking, tricky, uh, depending on the weather at the time. Um, so if you can see in the photo, they do put down a ramp, but you do have to be able to get in and out of the zodiac um, easily on your own and then walk up that rocky beach. And then here we have a couple pictures of what you're going to see um, in Skidans. Um, I believe it's the chief's house um, on the left and then some of the old um, poles on the right. And I think um, I did not do this experience myself, but uh, Marion can probably add a few words. The uh, Skidans is the most accessible of the five uh, villages where they have a watchman. There are five where a watchman lives all summer long and this one's the most accessible so it's uh, really quite busy. Uh, it is less secluded than Skangwai and as you can tell the poles are a little bit more weathered and I've been going to Hadagwai since 2012 and I have looked back at my pictures and I'm going oh my goodness these poles you can see way less now than you could in 2012. So it's, um, it's, it's pretty moving. On the left, the, the chief's house, this was, um, the whole story is amazing. That um, is Dee Dee in the picture, she's a watchman. Watchmen can be women, by the way. Uh, she's a watchman, she's, uh, she loves being there because her grandfather was from Skadans and, uh, and it was a hereditary chief and she will tell the story or whoever is giving the tour will tell the story of this uh, amazing building of this chief's house. It's uh, quite an amazing story. Uh, behind, the, behind Didi and the, and the chief's house there is the watchman's cabin, which we get to uh, have a look at as well. Great. And then, yes, you'll enjoy a delicious uh, picnic lunch. Uh, this company does one, this is the best picnic lunch I can honestly say I've ever had in my life. If people ask me what was the best picnic lunch you've ever had, it was this one. It's just so, so good and you're in such a beautiful place. And then sadly, that brings us to the end of the tour. So the following day, uh, we will take the Air Canada flight um, from Sandspit at 11 a.m., so we return to Vancouver early afternoon, and then you have scheduled flights uh, from YVR to your home cities, whether that's Victoria, Kelowna, or Kamloops. Um, and of course you would have a transfer if you're in the lower mainland. 
And I just have one more photo to share here. This was me in Haigwai. And as you can see, uh, rain or shine, you are going to have the best time. Um, I definitely left a little piece of my heart in Haida Gwaii. And also brought home so much as well. I know it's, this year has sort of been a pause for all of us where we've sort of had to tune more in to each other and ourselves and be there for our loved ones. And it's something that the, the Haida Nation has always um, done. And it's a place that truly makes you feel one with nature and really listen to nature and it will really really humble you so I absolutely loved it um, so now what I think I'll do is just open it up um, for any questions I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see the chat box you can type in any questions in the chat box While we're waiting for questions, I, I'll just uh, mention um, uh, how wonderful this place is. And I challenge people why. Carrie's mentioned the, the nature. Absolutely. Uh, the people that you see, whether they are Haida and have been there for generations and generations and generations, or non Haida that have chosen Haida Gwaii for whatever reason. Um, there are 120 kilometers of pavement and we drive pretty much every single one of those kilometers in the five days that you're there. Um, there's one traffic light and it turns red only when the ferry arrives. These, these things that, are, that just make the place amazing. Okay, we have a couple questions uh, coming in. One is the approximate cost of the separate flight. And I do have that here in front of me. I believe it's $750. Let me just. $730 per person for that float plane excursion to Ninstance. Um, then we do have another question um, from Janice, and she's asking any recommendations about what to pack. Um, I'll have Marion answer this, but we just so you are aware, we do send out a packing list. So once you've booked on the tour, when you get your final ticket package from Wells Gray Tours in there, we will have a recommended packing list. Um, rain gear is definitely on the top of the list. Um, it, it rained a lot on my particular tour but it stopped us from doing absolutely nothing, um, but we were dressed for the weather. So I know that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, it can be quite windy in Haida Gwaii, so you definitely wanna have some warm layers. Is there anything else you could think off the top of your head, Marianne, that they should absolutely pack? Um, not absolutely. Um, I like to see when people have got uh, walking poles. Yeah, so uh, that might be something uh, collapsible, of course, would be better, but yeah, um, but yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. Do we, we leave BC, uh, or sorry, BC, of course, Haida Gwaii is part of BC. You leave the interior or island, Vancouver, and it is sweltering hot, and you get to Haida Gwaii, you don't need your shorts and a t-shirt hardly ever. Take them along just in case, but most of it will be cooler weather kind of clothes. Good sturdy walking shoes, hopefully uh, waterproof. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I don't think we have any other questions. Maybe that means we answered lots of your questions this morning. I hope so. I hope that's great. I hope we offered a little bit of inspiration and insight. Um, we definitely miss being out on the road. We miss all of you so much and we love to support our local businesses and our local communities and these villages and we know Haida Gwaii is looking forward to having us come back of course and support their economy there so we just uh, are staying nice and positive for the future. Oh I just have one more question coming in. Um, there are two nights dinner is not included. Um, and so are there places to eat? Yes, th there are. Um, there are, there's, uh, well, there, 
I don't know what COVID's done with the businesses, so I can only speak from my experience when I was there. Uh, there was a, a I'm going to call it a high-end restaurant for Charlotte, and that just opened up maybe two, three years ago, and, uh, and then a couple of Chinese restaurants, and, uh, and then there's a couple of bars as well, like pub, a pub food. Um, yes, definitely places, places to eat, and I, or, I, or your tour director, it's not always me, will uh, definitely let you know where, where to have dinner. Sushi place. Oh my goodness, so good. So yes, yeah, seafood is in an abundance in, in Haida Gwaii. I had some excellent seafood, some of the best salmon I've ever eaten um, in Haida Gwaii. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, um, I do have... Uh, oh, it looks like we have a question. Sorry, just let me see what she is. You quite. Wendy, can you hear me? Do you have a yeah. question? Hi. Hi. I, I wondered, how do we know if Haida Gwaii is open for us to go there? Well, it's a waiting game at this point. We don't. Uh, they are hopeful they are opening um, for this summer season, and so are we. We have not heard that they are planning not to be open at this point. Um, and just like us, they are awaiting BC travel restrictions to see where that lands us. Um, you know, we, we just don't know. We're just staying hopeful. If for any reason the tours cannot go ahead because of COVID, um, Wells Great Tours has some very good policies in place. Um, if the tour is cancelled and can't go ahead, you have the option to rebook the following year so you get the first seats your discount you know we're offering travel credits many times um or we're offering full refunds when we can so there's worse you know i would you don't need to worry about that end of things um we just have to stay hopeful and hope that the case numbers go down and by the time people are vaccinated i know many people in Haida Gwaii have been vaccinated they've been really um doing going strong with their vaccinations which is great um, many of the people in the communities have already been vaccinated in Haida Gwaii. Twice. So, twice. They've had both doses. So it's looking good. It is looking good. But unfortunately, we don't have a yes or no answer. I hope that helps. <laughs> We're still, we just don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, it looks like that might be it for questions. Okay, um, so just before we go, on behalf of Wells Great Tours, we want to say thank you so much for joining us and traveling with us, and we sure hope the future is looking bright, and, um, and thankful, thank you to Marion for joining us this morning. Absolute delight. Thank you for inviting me, Carrie. And if you did have any technical difficulties or you know someone that did, this is being recorded and I will be sending this out um, by email and also attaching it in our next e-newsletter um, on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page. So lots of places to access this recording. And if you have any further questions, um, feel free to email myself or um, touch base with any of your local offices and we can answer any of those questions for you. And then just as we say goodbye, I'm going to leave you with just a two minute short documentary. Um, this was uh, the trailer for a documentary that was filmed in Haida Gwaii in 2015. Um, it has won numerous awards, um, being one of the best environmental documentaries out there. And uh, I recently found out about it and it's available through the Knowledge Network. Um, so I actually went on and signed up. It's free to sign up um, for the Knowledge Network, which I did not realize. And then you have access to all of their programs, which is absolutely fabulous. And this documentary is just over an hour long. Um, I just watched it last night and it is fabulous. It gives you such a fantastic um, history of the Haida culture, what they've been protecting, why they've been protecting it so long, um, 
you get so drawn into the area. There's some fabulous Haida people. Um, many of the people still living in Haida Gwaii. It's just a phenomenal film. So I would highly, highly recommend it. And what I will do, I'll play you the trailer so you can get a feeling for it. And then I will attach the link to the Knowledge Network um, for this documentary. So you can watch it hopefully maybe on your own time. So I think that's it. Anything else, Marion? Do you have any last words? Not really, just that uh, what you've seen this morning is just a snippet of what uh, you can experience on Haida Gwaii. I, I personally feel that it's so Canadian and every Canadian should be going. Yes, they've nicknamed it the Canadian Galapagos um, because it was not um, ever glaciated during the Ice Age. So it has one of the most um, diverse amount of species that you can actually find. So, and it's right here in our backyard. So I think we are so, so fortunate. Absolutely. And I think definitely this summer we are looking more at obviously staying local, staying close to home and supporting our local communities. So we couldn't be prouder to be offering uh, these kind of destinations. So yeah, we love you Haida Gwaii and we hope to see you soon. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and wish you all well and let you watch this trailer. So thank you. Thank you, bye. There's an old saying here on Haida Gwaii that's been passed down for many generations. Everything is connected to everything. Everywhere we go, nature is there. And by reconnecting, by growing food, by participating in community, I've realized these are the strongest acts of resistance that we can take and they are inherently uplifting. I kind of think that's the way it is because everything has its part and every part has its value and every value contributes to our life. 